I've just arrived back in Denmark for the holidays and that's also why this is not my usual setup and not the most festive of backgrounds even though I've tried a little bit but I'm currently sleeping in the office room in my dad's house so We'll, we'll work with what we got. I figured I'd try and tell you how we celebrate Christmas here in Denmark, especially since after talking to some of my British friends, I've realized that it's a bit different than what people do in England and definitely in other countries. One of the big differences is that we celebrate a lot more throughout December and leading up to Christmas. And one of the big reasons for that is that we have this thing called Julekalender, which I directly translated is the Christmas calendar, which I know everybody else has as well. But this one is like a TV show where there's a new episode every night leading up to Christmas. And every like major TV network has one. There's ones dedicated to younger children and like families, and then there's ones like dedicated to adults. And every night in December, you gather in front of the TV and you watch the next installment, which ends on the 24th being Christmas. Another family activity we do is called Klippeklistra, uh, where we make our own Christmas decorations. And again, directly translated, this would be called cut and glue. Um, which doesn't really have the same kind of vibe to it, but basically what we do is that we get a bunch of this glossy paper and then we braid Christmas hearts, we make stars, and we just decorate a house with it. And we also save them for each year so we kind of build up this homemade box of Christmas decorations. Actually, throughout my school years, leading up to Christmas throughout in December, we'd have like a designated day where our teachers would bring all that, all the stuff we needed in from the craft room, and then we'd just sit and listen to Christmas music, eat some Christmas cakes, Christmas cookies, and then just make some Christmas decorations. <laughs> Another staple throughout December, which is usually done at Christmas lunches, which are actually dinners, but we'll get back to that, is the pagelai, which directly translates is package game or the gift game, where everybody brings like a few small gifts, like think Poundland, Tiger, like fun stuff that aren't too expensive, um, that everybody can get a laugh out of or enjoy, maybe candy, stuff like that. You wrap them up, you put them in the center of the table, and then you have a die. And you go around the circle of all your friends, and you roll the dice, and when you get a six, you get to take a present. And when all the presents have been divided out, you put a timer on. Nobody knows how long the timer is, except maybe the guy who put it on, but even then, you could just like twist in an egg timer and not know. This time, when you get a six, you get to steal a present from somebody else, and when the timer rings, those are the presents you got. And trust me, it's very intense. Everybody gets really into it. It's just really fun. We play it every year. Now, I mentioned earlier this whole Christmas lunch, which is actually at dinner time. And that's basically where in each like social group that you're in, you'll have a Christmas lunch. And I know people do this in England as well, because I've just participated in the Musical Theatre Society one, but I, the dishes that we have are slightly different. I'm gonna bring up my phone for this one, and the trusty Google Translate, you can't, absolutely can't tell that that's Google Translate, Google Translate, because I do not know what the names of this in English for most of the part. So, a lot of Danish food consists of pork in some variation. So some of the staples that we have are medistapuse, and according to Google Translate, this is either called medis sausage or just sausages. So we have that, then we have something called fregadela, which I guess you would just call meatballs, but they're not really meatballs. Sometimes, and I know in Lincoln, for the Christmas markets, they will sell German fregadelas, um, and I would definitely recommend going and getting some, because they're very good. Also, not just German. We do in Denmark quite a lot, but those are there always. We also have herring, so you kind of start out with the herring, um, and then you make your way on to the pork with the sausages, the fagadella meatballs. You will also have a lot of brown gravy, because brown gravy is awesome. You might even have fleskestai, which in English is roast pork. And then we've got the potatoes. We've got regular potatoes, and then we've got caramelized potatoes. And when I made this for my British friends, that was a big hit. I asked them what the most interesting thing I told them about Danish Christmas was, and they said caramelized potatoes. Also, you will have your rye bread and your ripe bread, and you can either, at least in my family, we sometimes have salmon, but you also always have leopostai, which I think in English Google Translate was not very helpful with this one, it's called liver paste. It sounds gross, it's really, really not. You have hot liver paste with some mushrooms and some bacon, you eat that on rye bread. And then, of course, we get to the dessert part. And here we have quite a few things as well. The first one is Eppleskiwa, which I believe in English is called apple skewers. Directly translated, apple slices. The, we used to bake apples into them, no longer do that, so now the name is just kind of weird. That is a thing you have all throughout December. It can definitely be qualified as both breakfast, lunch, and dinner if you want. 
They're very good, but we only eat them at December. Another thing we have is the Danish Christmas cookie called Pionala or pepper nuts. There's no pepper involved, um, and the nuts is because they're kind of shaped into little nuts. And once again, I made those with my English friends and they all really love them. Another dessert, which again can count as breakfast, lunch, or dinner, in fact, my sister just had it for breakfast this morning, is Riesenkrolt or rice porridge. And we have it with cinnamon and a bit of butter in the middle. And the cinnamon and butter melts into it and it's really good. And then the final dessert, which you will usually only have on Christmas Eve, is Riesalamang, Riesalamang, I don't think there's an English equivalent of this because it's actually a, Brit a French word turned Danish, which is kind of like the rice porridge, but also not because it's more wet. You put almonds in it and you chop up little almonds, but you leave one almond that's whole and then whoever gets the almond wins a present. So there's a little, little game during food. Now, on the 24th, which is Christmas in Denmark, there's no 25th, we'll get back to that. On the 24th, um, each family obviously has their own traditions, but in Denmark it's usually like a full day of family things. You show up at the designated Christmas house. For me, it's usually my grandparents, at least on my mom's side. And some people also be in the kitchen because there's like a huge feast to be eaten and be made. But otherwise you kind of just mingle, chat a bit. Maybe, depending on the time, you'll watch one of the Christmas calendar TV shows thingies. There's usually like between two and four to like keep up with, so you kind of like plan your time after being able to watch like the conclusions of those, at least the kid ones. And then you eat and like I said it's kind of like a three course thing. Also at like six o'clock there is the Disney Christmas show which is the same cartoons every year from Christmas. It's usually like the old ones like you have Bambi, that kind of stuff and there's a new one each year. It was like a new surprise. Like one year it was like a little frozen one that was in there. So you watch that. It's a tradition. The family gathers in front of the TV. Then after that you get up you join hands and you sing and dance around the Christmas tree. And this is a very Danish thing, um, which is why your Christmas tree has to be out in the middle of the living room. You probably pull it out and you just hold hands and you walk in like a circle around the Christmas tree and you sing a Christmas song. And not just any Christmas song, a lot of Christmas songs. We have like a catalog of songs that we sing. And usually you end with one where you still hold hands, but you're like running through the entire house uh, singing which means now it's Christmas again and Christmas lasts all the way to Easter and then continues. Uh, no, that isn't true. No, that isn't true because in between comes Lent. And you just continue that over and over again and you go faster and faster and faster and run through the house after you've just eaten exercise I know <laughs> and until somebody gets tired um, and then once the that is done you sit down and you give out the presents because in Denmark we don't do Christmas presents on the 25th we do them on the 24th and trust me a lot of friends both American and British have told me that that's wrong and we're doing it wrong and why would we do that and to that I say we enjoy our sleep everywhere else you get woken up at like 6 a.m. by children jumping in your bed going presents, presents, presents. Not in Denmark. In Denmark, they get them in the evening on the 24th and then they play with them probably until like midnight. So they're real tired the next day and everybody sleeps in and it is beautiful. Now I hear you say, Melina, what about Santa? He can't show up if the kids aren't sleeping. <laughs> Think again. We've got that covered. Often in families, they will have a designated person probably male. He will dress up as Santa, he will carry the sack of presents, and he will show up and give a presents to each child. Yes, that's right. In Denmark, kids meet Santa Claus on the 24th. So yeah, that was, um, that was a quick run through of the pretty extensive season that is Christmas in Denmark. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you found it interesting to learn a little bit about how we do it in my culture. And Honestly, I would really like to know how you celebrate it. So if you want to, and if you have any traditions that like special to your country or to your family, feel free to leave them in comments down below. I hope you enjoyed watching this. And until next time, I hope you have wonderful Christmas days full of family fun. Bye.